I'm about to explain how to use API routing in Next.js 13, but quickly before I do that, I have to deal with a question. Did Next.js 13 break API routing? If you're used to using Next.js 12, you may have heard that you should put your APIs within the pages directory. This is their official documentation. It's very simple. You just do something like this, pages slash API slash user dot JS. Then if you go to your website slash API slash user. If you were to put this inside of that file, it would return this JSON object on the screen. But with Next.js 13, they're moving away from pages to this app directory. If you watched my recent 15 minute crash course on Next.js 13, I accidentally told you to delete the pages directory found in Next.js 13. The reason why I told you to delete the pages directory is because I thought you didn't need it anymore with Next.js 13. I thought that everything within the pages directory would now be within the app directory using the new routing system. I found this to be true with routing, nested routing, even global state management like Context API, which I recently made a video about. But when looking to develop a real Next.js project, I came up on the point where I needed to create some API endpoints. And so within the app directory, I tried tried to create an API and I tried to create an index.js like I normally would, but to my surprise, I realized that it did not work. If I try to go to API, it just says this page is not found. The reason is if you go to the app directory beta documentation on the Next.js website, you'll notice they say API route should still be defined in the pages slash API. API directory and not moved to the app directory. So I was wrong when I said you should delete the pages directory in Next 13. If you're using Next 13 and you're planning on using APIs, you actually still need the pages directory. So if you're like me and you've created a Next 13 app and you've already deleted the pages directory, for this next part, you'll need to go ahead and recreate your pages directory in the root of your next J project because you'll need to be keeping all of your APIs within the pages directory and then it'll start working again. So just to show you how this works, I'm going to take this API directory with the index.js file in it. I'm going to drag it to the pages directory. And now if you refresh the page, if you'll shut down your server, if you already have it open, start it back, say npm run dev. Now, if you go back to your project and go slash API, you'll notice the API works. It returned the name John Doe. So again, just to reiterate, if you're using Next.js 13 and you've started migrating everything to the app directory, make sure you still keep your APIs within the pages directory. Don't delete the pages directory. You need pages to set up your API calls. And now I'm going to go briefly through exactly how to create APIs using Next.js 13. So to get started, it's pretty simple. In your pages directory, just go ahead and create an API directory, create an index.js file. Within that file, you'll want to create a function, name it handler. And what you just saw here is a simple Git request. The rest is for response. You want to say response status 200 means it's a good request. And we're wanting to return a JSON object and you can put whatever you want in here. I'll just say page name and I'll say home page. I'll go ahead and delete this down here. Now, if you go just just to slash API, that will be returned. You can also have nested routes within here. So say you want to have an API slash dashboard page, dashboard API. All you have to do is within the API folder, create another folder call it dashboard. Within the dashboard folder, create another index file, index.js. You could copy this handler function, paste it in there. I'm just going to change this to say dashboard page API. And now if you go to localhost slash API slash dashboard, it returns that API. And you can go down further from there. I'll say dashboard two for a second dashboard page. Within there, I'll say index.js 
yes. I'll copy this handler again, paste it there, say dashboard two page, and let's go slash dashboard two. And as you can see, it returned the correct page name. If you're used to using something like Express to create RESTful APIs, you're probably wondering how to handle get request, post request, put request, delete request, things like that. Well, the way you can see the request type is through this rec property. You can deconstruct something called method from that, from the rec. Then if you console log this method, it'll tell you the post type. So I'll just show you uh, what the response is. So if I come here and refresh the page, it shows you that the method is a get request. And so one of the ways you can handle this is you can say a switch. You can use this built-in function switch, say method, and then you can use something called case to check what the value of method is. You can say if the value of method is get basically, case get, then put a semicolon sort of like this is the property key. And now you're going to create a value, which is going to be the response. So I'll put a note here that says, get data. And for this, I'll go ahead and return with this rest.status function, our dashboard to page API. And then right after that, what you want to do is say break so that it finishes the function. Now say maybe you also want within here to have a put request or maybe a post request available. Well, you can just say cased post. This checks to see if it's a post request. And under there, I'll put post data. And then here you can post your data to your database using whichever database you're using, MongoDB, Postgres, whatever, like you normally would in a Node.js environment. And once you're done with that, you can rest.status200 again to show that it was successful, if it was successful. And you could return a JSON object, whatever you want. I'll just say response, post, post, successful. And say maybe that's all you want for this API. API, a get request, a post request. Remember to say break under that. Whenever you're done with your API post request, you always want to make sure you have a default value here and you can put a colon here. And for your default, you want to make sure to say rest.set header. And what this does is this first value here, you want to say allow, put a comma, create an array. Then within here, you want to say what kind of methods are allowed, what kind of requests are allowed. So so for this, there's a get request and a post request. So I'm going to put git and also post. And so now this will check, is this a git request or a post request? Because those are the only ones allowed. And then under that, you say what you want to return. If this is not a git request or a post request, you can say status 405. This signifies that it's an error and you can say dot end and you could put back ticks, say something like method method and then you could put dollar sign curly braces and just say method here uh, so then say this was a put request or a de or a delete request it'll say method delete request or put request not allowed and then if someone ever tries to put something or get something to this specific endpoint it won't allow it it'll return this error saying not allowed and this is a way you can handle your API endpoints with without using Express or something like that. You can just use what's built into Next.js. The last thing I wanted to show you about API routing is how to add in parameters in the URL. The way to do this is there's something called query within the rec parameter. So you can also deconstruct query. And with this console log here, I'll just say comma query so we can see what is inside of the query. If you want to pass in parameters with uh, your API call, such as maybe with a post request, the way you do that is where you say index.js, rename that to have braces around the name index. And within here, you can name it whatever you want. So for example, I'll just change this to ID. 
say I want to add an ID to my API post request, something like that, then I would put ID in what looks like an array. And now if I do that, I'll have to add a parameter or this API call won't work anymore. So let me show you what I mean. If I go back to my slash dashboard two, say enter, it'll say this page could not be found. The reason is I have not yet passed in this ID parameter. The way to pass in this ID parameter is in the URL, just say slash and you can put whatever you want. I'll just say 27. This is how you would pass in the parameter. You would go slash whatever the value is. Then at that point, it would start working again. And if you come down here to our console log, it'll show that there's an ID of 27. Now, what if you want to add more than one ID or more than one parameter? Well, you can do that too. Uh, first, I just want to show you, you can't do this by itself. So I'll just say uh, slash 33. It won't work if you add in a second parameter just this way. To add in a second parameter, instead of saying uh, an array with ID inside of it, put an, a dot, dot, dot in front of it, sort of like a spread operator. And now this can take in as many parameters as you want, separated by the slash. As you can see, if you refresh the page, now when it says ID, it's an array with ID of 27 and 33. It's no longer just a single string value. It's now an array with two values. And then say I want another number 42. It'll just keep going on and on. And I could change this. Uh, maybe instead of saying ID, I could say params for parameters. And then I refresh the page, come back here. It'll say params. So from that point on, I could use the params. So I could say maybe uh, params zero, it's zero indexed, refresh the page that'll give me that value of 27. I could say query params one, query params two. And now if I refresh this page, I can have access to each individual value, which I could then use inside of a post request, if this is a post request or a put request, delete request. And so that's how you can receive parameters with your API calls. It's pretty simple. If you just want one parameter, put it within an array, instead of saying index, .js or ts, put it within an array. And then if you want more than one parameter, put a dot, dot, dot in front of whatever you want to call it. And that is how API routing works in Next.js 13. It's the same way that it worked in Next.js 12. So Next.js 13 did not break API routing. It's just you need to keep your APIs within the pages directory. So if you've already deleted your pages directory, again, you'll want to create it again so that you can put your APIs inside of it. Everything else can go in the app directory directory, but you'll want to keep your APIs within the pages directory, at least for now. It looks like the Next.js team is working on how to add APIs to the app directory based on their documentation. So in the near future, you may be able to put your APIs within the app directory, but as of right now, you still need to keep your APIs within the pages directory. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.